Hello everyone, welcome to Rural Water Resource Management NPTEL course. This is week eight, lecture two. In this week's lecture, as per the syllabus, we are looking at the issues for rural water resource management. What are the ways that we can overcome these issues? And also, what are the key players? like which agency has to take care of those kind of things. In the last lecture, we looked at capacity building. We took a viewpoint that water, especially in rural water resources, it doesn't just look at agriculture. There is also the possibilities of industries, possibilities of domestic water use, and most importantly, climate change and ecosystem services. All these are very important to attain good value for your water in agriculture. For example, if you do not supply enough water structures for climate change adaptation, then whatever water you supply for agriculture is not enough because climate change is happening, uh, too much temperature might be ruining the crops, temperature increase, <clears throat> or a flood period might decrease the crops. So, to navigate that, you are in need of rural water resource management as a holistic view. In that, we also look especially on capacity building. There are agencies and let's uh, look at how these agencies are managing water, okay? Government schemes. In today's lecture, we will be looking at the government schemes and how they do rural water resource management, especially one or two schemes, because there are many, many schemes, as I discussed in the last lecture. There are many ministries, there are many agencies under the ministry which work on water management. However, because there is not much interaction between these agencies or ministries, most of the time, water is managed in isolation. And we want to promote that water should not be managed in isolation, but as a combination or a holistic approach where every key player is taken. Let's look at one government scheme which is actively working on water resources, especially in rural water resources. As I said, there are multiple schemes um, that have been started, and most of them are short term maintenance, less budget, and not in a long term fashion. What do you mean by short term? It looks like this. I build, uh, uh, I see from your village that you need uh, small structures to store water. Okay. So the government scheme would say, okay, now you could um, uh, set up a check dam. The check dam will solve your issue. But after three years, four years, what happens? The check dam needs maintenance. Who's going to put the money? It's not clear. And to be honest, there's no budget. So the budget given by the agency is to build the structure, but the stakeholders are not participating. That is why these government schemes are kind of uh, failing. For example, if the farmers are saying, oh, I appreciate the work by this check dam, and so I would put in my time and some money to manage this check dam, then it's good. Then it can survive, but most of them are not. And maintenance is very, very expensive in some cases. For example, if sedimentation is too much, then you need a big bulldozer to come or JCP to come in, dig deep and take all the sediment out, which normally a small farmer cannot afford. So both the players and also the government agencies should come in term of maintenance. Infrastructure and maintenance issues are also big. The infrastructure might take too long to build, especially in government schemes because of budgets. And also the maintenance is not clearly spent. 
these are the long term projects also like for example dams canals etc not only the short term um, benefits and goals but also the infrastructure benefits in the in the long term are they built for climate resilience are they taking into account ecosystem services all these concepts we looked in the previous lecture and are they focused on only one aspect of the holistic picture okay all these are important issues that one has to look at carefully in the government scheme let's take a scheme for example and again i'm not picking on a scheme and saying okay this is failing or that is doing better or something it is just to show how a rural water management could be better if these schemes take all these considerations into account as i showed in the last lecture water conservation under the manrega has sustainably increased in the last 5 years i'll just only show the data till 2014 to 2018 which is you could see that from 18000 crores uh it is more than doubled in 5 years it goes to 41000 crores expenditure spent on water conservation activities under the manrega even though the manrega was given to prevent migration of farmers 100 days work the government ran out of work what work can you give them so in the 2014 times uh, early early times of the scheme if you see all the farmers would do is come put a signature take the 100 uh, day per day salary at that time it was 100 rupees but now it depends on the state and where you are for example karnataka pays around 289 per day so they take that money and they would sit there for a couple of uh, hours uh, just discussing uh, personal things and so no work done okay and then they go back to their houses so this was also not well organized because they didn't have bank accounts okay so there was no monitoring of their money there's no accountability of where it went because at that time everyone did not have bank accounts but now uh, the banks have been started in villages you have mobile banks phones wallets and also postmen who could take a, a mobile unit to uh, collect money and give money um, at the household level there's a lot of money that has been pumped into the water resource management under the nrm under the manrega so manrega is a, a bigger budget okay uh, for example last year it was around um, uh, 60 70000 crores uh, and from there part of the money is given for nrm and almost 60 to 75% as this document says from the government of india is given for natural resource management and most of the natural resource management is looking at water security because natural resource management includes soil moisture soil management soil fertility management forest etc but most of them are still tied with water so most of the budget is kept for water the expenditure on nrm a uh, work expenditure has been rising in a sustained manner over the last 5 years from 2014 to 2019 uh, it is good it is good for the rural water resource management how the money is used is the question is it is it properly used is it documented well is the question okay if you look here the uh, mission uh, water conservation under the nrm component there are important protocols um, given in this document uh, or or the letter given dated on 14th um, in 2016 so you could say that uh, there is a lot of protocols on how to use this mandrika money for mission water conservation you cannot just say okay i'm going to build a dam put all the mandrika money there it's not possible there are some protocols there are some signing conservation activities management etc so all these have to be taken into account let's take couple of the protocols in example protocol 7 of guideline mandrega and iwmp iwmp is integrated water management plan okay and program 
Integrated Watershed Management Program. Okay, it's given here. So water management independently under the Mandrega. So you can you can say that this budget uh, of the Mandrega is used for water management independently under the Mandrega. And watershed management works under Mandrega in convergence with IWMP scheme. So IWMP, IWMP is a different scheme. And from that scheme also there is water uh, budgets, budgets to conserve rural water. So what this protocol says is you can use uh, this uh, budget uh, for water management independently under the Mandrega, or you could take it out and then use it with another scheme, uh, which is IWMP. So why is this important? As I was saying in the previous lectures, sometimes agencies talk to um, don't talk to each other. And at one point, this guy will be building a dam so that the other guy will also be building a dam. There'll be two dams in the same location on paper and budgets. And then when they go there and see, oh no, there's a dam already. A small dam, check dam, for example, or a check dam, and then 10 feet away, there's another check dam. Both are not built by the same agency, different agencies. So this is where. Uh, the government scheme, especially Mandrega, has been very wise to say that uh, I don't have to put all the amount if I'm collaborating with IWMP, which is in convergence, which means IWMP's money is coming, Mandrega money is coming, and we built one check dam uh, to conserve water, which is good. Protocol 8 of the guideline claims that prioritizing works of command area development and water management, CAD and WM. So it needs to prioritize the command area development, the area of the watershed that gives water into the uh, outlet point. I'm just uh, redrawing it for clarity. So this is your watershed. And for example, this is your structure, okay? Each structure has a command area. If the structure is here, then uh, like a dam or a, a small, uh, recharge pond, then this area is your command area, which drains into your conservation infrastructure. Whereas this doesn't uh, take the whole uh, basin uh, approach uh, in terms of uh, command area. Yes, all this is the command area for this point, which is the outlet point for the watershed or the pore point. But more importantly, you have sub basins or sub catchment areas, which uh, can be prioritized for rural water management. So the protocol eight says prioritizing works of command area development and water management uh, for rural water resources. You need to not only build your check dam, but also the work in the command area has to be done so that water is coming clean and in a sustainable way. For example, uh, you have this area where you have, um, you know, and this is the command area. Suppose there are some uh, streams or networks that is bringing water and you have encroachment in this area or the, the canal is broken, then that is not managed. So here protocol A can be used, the budget can be used for managing that land. It is not directly saying that, oh, I'm clearing the land for water. However, we know that only if you clear that part of the land, water will flow. And that has to be documented. So the Mandrega assets, because of this, there is multiple, multiple assets that are being developed under the Mandrega scheme because of the big budget, as we saw around um, 41,000 crores in 2017-18 uh, period or similar period. And that money uh, cannot be just simply used to build assets. This is the concern for a lot of um, people working on the rural water management. You should build it for a particular idea for a long-term purpose. If you're just saying that I'm going to build because the budget is there, I just build, build, build these check dams and go, then there is less scientific validation for it. Let's look at some. So the Mahatma Gandhi National uh, Rural Employment Guarantee Act. So this is the 100 days guarantee employment to farmers and villages. So if you give that 100 days employment out of 365 days, then the idea is that remaining part, uh, they will do some agriculture. For example, the monsoon period is spread across three months. So 90 days, they may do some agriculture. And then the remaining part, they will uh, sustain using the money that they earned in agriculture and the 100 days. 
The 100 days is mostly in the summertime when there is no agriculture possible. So many assets have been created because the government suddenly arrives that it, instead of just giving the money, use them as labors to uh, build some water conservation activities like check dams, nalas, bunts, and managing these uh, water resources, nursery, forestry. Uh, you can um, um, monitor and uh, manage these saplings so that when someone asks for uh, reforestation or forestation work, you can give these samplings. Agroforestry, climate resilient crops, uh, horticulture, fruits. So all of this has to be managed at a, a small nursery level first to convert the seeds into a good sapling or a plant and then they give it uh, as an asset. How is this tied with water conservation, this uh, small plants? It is tied because unless a farm uh, has access to it, they may grow only the crops that they have access and may be taking too much water out, which is against rural water management. Let's take eucalyptus, for example. Eucalyptus is a tree uh, which is uh, used mostly in hilly areas where water is more. If you're using it in a more flat land uh, like Bangalore, then uh, eventually it will pull all the water out because it drinks or, or consumes a lot of water. That has to be avoided. Okay, so this kind of activity where uh, native plants and trees are given with less water consumption should be encouraged so that water management activities get a pass mark in uh, the Indian uh, Madriga system. Both small and large water bodies uh, infrastructures have been created under this Madrika scheme. Not only created, but managed also. So the guideline says on water, watershed uh, management works taken up independently under the Madrika or in convergence with the IWMP. You can Google this document, it is available. Um, uh, all these letters are available, which determines and also gives as an order to all the uh, high um, dignitaries and uh, policy makers um, and the bureaucrats, for example, secretaries, IAS officers, to use the um, Mandrega budget for watershed management work either independently, which they may not have capacity in some access or some regions, uh, or in convergence with the IWMP, Integrated uh, uh, Watershed Management Plan. Because in the integrated watershed management, there is water also. It's not only cropping, not tilling the sand, uh, sorry, tilling the soil, uh, making the land uh, uh, slopes gentler, those kind of things. But there's also water component. Let's look at the um, assets tagged uh, by the Mandriga. So one good thing about the Mandriga asset. So what is an asset is one of these infrastructures that are created using the budget. So one good thing is the government has given the sources uh, where it is located in your village, the geotag locations of the village, uh, and when the uh, pond or what the asset has been created. Okay, so if you look at here, major water conservation works created under the Mandrega. Uh, this is a 2019 report. You could see that ponds around 20. 20,000 um, ponds have been created. Ponds are much bigger than farm ponds, which are smaller in size. Um, so there's around 18,000, um, I'm sorry, 20 lakh ponds, and then farm ponds around 18 lakhs. Uh, whereas we have check dams, 5,000, um, so 5 lakhs, and dug wells around 5 lakhs, 14. So there's some uh, differences there. And then embankments, which have been strengthened, the buns around uh, 2 lakh. So total completed work is around 50 lakh and think about the budget, how much budget goes in. And if you look at the water component or water management under the NRM, uh, under the Mandrega, it is almost around 30,000, 40,000 crores. Uh, so it's still good money that can be spent on these 50 lakh projects. Okay, so a lot of money and a lot of projects have been um, built. And the proposed works going on is uh, 57 lakhs. Um, not all these projects are up to date in the dashboard that they've created uh, here. Um, and, uh, uh, 
in uh, rega or pib.gov.in you would see all these locations and um, uh, where they have been done uh, individual asset properties may take some time for the database to be created like for example how much uh, each budget is or what is the characteristics of each of them that uh, data is still uh, taking time so what are the issues in this now i have a map uh, i can i can easily tell uh, a village i can take out a village let's say latur and i will say so this is latur in maharashtra i would say go there and then look into these assets and tell me how it is sustaining the rural water management what is the reality of these assets not all some okay some assets is it is not uh, you know properly managed okay or is it short term for example let's take um, the tanks uh, these tanks are there um, in in uh, Coimbatore uh, and Madurai region of South India in uh, districts in Tamil Nadu what you see is uh, you have um, a tank which has been given Manrega money or, or or some budgets from the government to clear however the budget is not enough the asset is there uh, and the budget is given based on the assets number rather than uh, you know, the need how much need what is the actual need and sometimes budget is just given very simply okay i'll say okay clear all the uh, uh, weed the non-native neem uh, present in the tank that you say, which is consuming a lot of water. You cannot do it by hand. So there is a lot of public participation and NGOs, for example, Dan has worked a lot there to use uh, machinery, high uh, equipment to remove all these um, uh, weed plants, non-native plants. And what you see is a cleared uh, uh, Martan Kulam tank, uh, but still, um, it's not fully operating with water uh, because there is more budgets needed, which can be uh, provided through the Manrega assets budget. Another one is the Vandu tank, which also had full of uh, plants and weeds. Uh, basically, a tank is something that stores water. And these tanks were not created by Manrega, but much, much longer before. So instead of creating new assets, the Mandrega budget, the government budget can be used to sustain the existing budgets. And that is what this example is about. And there are some budgets, for example, the well uh, you see here uh, from Marvi, uh, these are made in the, as an asset in uh, the uh, Mandrega budget, but it's not maintained properly. So who's questionable of these maintenance arises? The farmers, the stakeholders have to be also accountable because they are the ones using the water, whereas the government is just pushing uh, these budgets into it. So they have to identify the people and say, hey, I'm going to put these, you have to manage it properly. Another example is this check dam. Check dam is built using the Mandrega budget, but half of it is gone. Maybe a big flood came and then washed out the, uh, the wall, the machinery. But isn't it needed to um, conserve it? Isn't it needed to repair it? That repairing budget is not available. So most of the assets are kind of short-lived. They are there, the money has been put, you build a check dam or a small structure, a tank, but if there's no budget for maintenance, you cannot maintain it well. But just taking a step from the government's end, how can you budget all this? And what happens to the budget if it is not used? For example, I build a check dam, and I say that uh, I'll give you five lakhs for the check dam, one lakh to manage it for five years. What happens if there's no big flood in the five years? Will the money be returned? So those uh, things are not clarified. And for that, the simple thing is, I won't give you management money. I just give you the asset. Now the proposal here through this class, I'm trying to make you think is why can it not be a public and government partnership where government has put the initial cost to build a check dam and the public or the stakeholders who are using it have to come together and properly manage it. See, the government has given the asset. If the asset works, it's fine, no flood, fine. But if suddenly a climate change is occurring, flood is um, hitting the area, it is the impetus of the farmers to come together and do something about it or use some other budget to sustain it. So that is what is, um, the case of most of these assets, not some, but uh, 
that it is lacking the ownership from the participatory farmers. And the farmers are disconnected from this aspect that uh, it is the it is an asset from the Mandrega, it is a government of India asset, so I should not be uh, the one responsible for it. And there are multiple, multiple uh, reasons why people are separated against this. So uh, when these schemes are, are built, because every year we're getting budget from Mandrega, and every year there is 60 to 75 percent of money going to be put on NRM. So if these NRMs are not properly managed, it is a loss to the taxpayer. So the best thing to do is to manage it properly, cautiously that I'm also a stakeholder, I'm also getting benefit of this, and then use it well. And there are other development budgets in the panchayat which can be used to sustain these activities. With this, uh, I would conclude today's lecture where we discussed about one of the issue, which is the ownership of the assets and the status of these assets. So in the previous uh, slides where I showed the, uh, the location of this, there's no status uh, map for it. it, is how they operate it. As I initially said, there's no data about the operation, there's no data about um, the current status of the dams or the structures from check dams, dug wells. We need to know, right? Yes, you're putting all these in, but to better manage, uh, there should be some uh, status report of this. Then what would happen is we could create a budget out of the NRM for management. So let's say every year I'm going to put new dug wells or new check dams. Instead of 10 check dams, I can put nine check dams and the cost of the remaining one check dam I can use to maintain the other check dams, which are built five years ago, four years ago, etc. Because when you build a check dam, let's take check dam alone as an example. When you build a check dam, it can live uh, well for the first three, four years where less sediment is there, uh, the water, uh, even though the climate uh, change induced floods hit the check dam, it still has the strength to manage it. But once it gets slowly older and older, <clears throat> the system would fail or collapse. Sedimentation picks up. Uh, and other resources are there. So it is very important to manage also, not just create the assets and also have information on the status of these assets and how they are working. This, um, I think we would be in a better way to manage rural water manage, uh, resources assets, especially under the Mandrega budget, which has put tremendous amount of money on the farmers, um, um, you know, 100 day scheme uh, for NRM and part of the NRM is going into the water resource development for the village. It is not only the village responsibility or the government responsibility. It is a responsibility of both these uh, players and uh, especially the farmers should take care of the management if there's not much budget involved. With this, I would conclude today's lecture. I hope uh, this uh, field component of how these schemes are working. On paper, you would see on the on the laptop uh, or on, on a discussion, you would see all these assets are there. But are they managed well? Are they long term or short term? Is the question. I hope this class uh, would give light into that. Thank you. I will see you in the next class.